In this video demonstration, I will be showing how to open data sets in the Stata interface. To begin, let's open Stata on our computer. Once Stata is opened, you should see this introductory window to Stata interface. The first step for us will always be opening a new file editor. Remember, the new file editor is simply a text-based environment in which we can enter the commands that we would like Stata to run. So to get to our new file editor, we're going to go to the window command at the top of Stata, down to new file editor, and then choose the selection for new new file editor. Notice that it opens a blank new file editor, which is simply a place to type the commands that I would like Stata to run. I'm going to organize this by moving my new file editor to the right of my screen and the Stata output window to the left of my screen. Now, one of the first steps that you almost always do in analysis using Stata is to designate the directory in which you want to open files from or perhaps save output to. We'll do this using the command cd. cd simply stands for change directory. So we add the cd command to our new file editor. And then we need to tell Stata which file or which folder within our file system we wish to open files from or save files to. But today I'm going to be working with some example data called the wage data set. And I have this data set saved, as you can see, in three different formats on my computer. One of these is a comma-separated CSV file. Another is a Stata data set file. And the third is a Microsoft Excel file. Each of these contains the same data simply in a different uh, file system or a different format in which it's saved. Now, to designate this directory for Stata to understand where these files are located, in Windows, I will simply go to the top, right-click, and select Copy Address. Returning to the Do File Editor, I will copy that address into parentheses, noting at the end that I may need to add an extra backslash to designate the Wage Data folder. All right, so the cd command change directory is simply the letter cd with a space and then the link to the folder on your file system in which your files are saved. Now let's run that command and just make sure Stata can understand it. At the top of my do file editor, you'll see a command with what looks like a little sheet of paper and an arrow. When you highlight over that, it says execute do. When I click this button, I'll immediately see in the output window that Stata has changed the directory to the selected folder in which I want to work from. All right, now that I have Stata working out of the folder of interest, let's open some data. First thing I'll do will do will be to open the data set in the Stata format. You'll notice that I add a comment to my data, a new file editor. A comment is simply a note to me as the researcher. If the line of code that Stata doesn't run or doesn't try to interpret, It'll be completely ignored in the output of the data set, but it allows me as a researcher to go back and see what Stata was doing in this instance. So I simply add a comment by putting the asterisk at the front and then typing whatever text I want after that, right? Now, in order to open a Stata formatted data set, I'm going to use the command use. So I'll begin by typing use, and then in parentheses, I will give it the file name of the data set I'm interested in. In this case, it's wage.dta. And then I will add a comma clear. What clear does is it simply clears the memory of any data sets that may already be loaded. If you don't include this argument, you run the risk of encountering an error when you try to open your data, because if there is another data set loaded into Stata, it will not allow you to open the wage data set. So I've uh, done all I need to do to open a Stata data set. Use command, name of the file, and comma clear. I'm going to highlight that command, again go to my execute selection or execute do button, and click that button. Notice that almost immediately a state opens this data set in the output window. We know it's there partially by looking at the variables section of the output window, and we suddenly see all of the variables that are included in this data set. We can also verify this by typing the command browse, which allows us to see our data in a format that look, may look familiar uh, in a Microsoft Excel type uh, environment. All right, now let's suppose though that your data doesn't come in a Stata format. So perhaps it comes in a, a common format called a CSV, which stands for a comma separated file. But how would we open a CSV version of our weights data? 
Well, I'll begin by adding a comment with the asterisk that says that my next line of code is going to open the CSV data. Then rather than using the use command, I'm going to use a command called insheet. So I'll type insheet. Then insheet requires a second word, which is the word using. In the name of my file, wage, oh, almost made a mistake. It's not the DTA version, but it is the CSV version in this case. We'll also need the comma clear to remove any files that may also be in memory. And we're going to add one extra argument this time called names. The names argument simply tells Stata that the first line of the code includes the variable names. When using the Stata formatted data set, Stata is able to understand this intuitively, but when inputting a CSV file, we need to add this extra line to let Stata know that the CSV file includes variable names in the first line. All right, so the insheet command, insheet using the name of the file, clear, and names. Again, I'll highlight this line of code, go to this execute selection button, and we immediately see in the output window that Stata has loaded the data set wage.cvsv. You can see that it has 25 variables with 526 total observations. Again, the variable window includes the list of variables. And if I was to type browse, I could see my data in a Excel worksheet format. All right, the final format of data we may be interested in is opening data that comes in an actual Excel sheet. So again, I'll add a comment here with my asterisk that says open an Excel sheet or open Excel data. Now, in order to open Excel data, I'm going to use a third or new command called import Excel. But import Excel, then we'll include the name of the data set. In this case, it'll be wage.xls for the Excel data set. Again, I'll include clear to remove any data that may already be in memory. And then like the opening of the CSV, I need a way to tell Stata that the Excel sheet includes variable names in the first line. However, just to make things a little confusing, instead of using names this time, the import Excel command requires the argument first row. That's simply telling Stata that the first row of the Excel sheet includes the variable names. So the command import Excel, again the file name, clear to remove any data that may already be in memory, and then first row to tell Stata that the names of the variables are in the first row. Again, I'll highlight this command, click Execute Do, and I immediately see in my output window that this command is run successfully, a list of variables is included in the variable section, and again, by using the Browse command, I can actually view the data. All right, so these are three simple formats that would allow you to open most of the common data set or data formats that you would encounter using Stata. We talked about the use command to open Stata data. We talked about the insheet command to open CSV or comma separated data. And the import Excel command to open Excel data sets. It should give you a good start with opening different data sets that you encounter in the Stata environment. We'll look forward to the next lecture to learn what we can actually do with this data once it's open.